Dear students, we have to continue the lesson once again, the chromosomal basis of inheritance. And this one we have DNA metabolism in plants. This part is included only for pure botany students and not for biobotany. The lesson is over for biobotany. Now these are the portions included for botany. Now what is DNA metabolism? A simple one. It includes three events. DNA metabolism includes three events. This is one replication. This is number one process. Number two, there is DNA repair. And number three, recombination. So these three events together call us DNA metabolism. So DNA metabolism, that is the word refers to actually a process by which Copies of DNA molecules are made. That is a replication process along with DNA repair as well as what we have recombination. That's why I say these three just words that is replication, repair and recombination together constitute the DNA metabolism. Okay. So copies of DNA are made that is called replication along with what is called a DNA repair, I will tell you what is that one and also recombination process, a regular event that is happening during meiosis. Okay now, what is DNA replication? We already studied in zoology. I want to go through quickly because already you understood the meaning. Now in the DNA double helix, we have two strands of DNA. The two strands of DNA get separated and each strand can synthesize its own complementary strand. I don't want to repeat the one because the same mechanism what is studied in molecular basis of inheritance in zoology. So the two strands get separated and each strand can synthesize its own complementary strand. So the DNA replication is a semi-conservative method or a process. So in which the newly formed DNA molecules normally have one strand just normally the parallel strand is conserved. One strand is the parallel strand, another one is newly synthesis. This is called DNA replication. Now the second event under the metabolism, DNA repair. I will go through this DNA replication just uh, in an elaborated manner after finishing these three events. Now when compared to other macromolecules like carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Now the DNA molecule is unique among these macromolecules because it is only in the DNA we have the repair system exist. Carbohydrates or proteins or fats, they do not have any repair system. And that is a unique feature of DNA molecule. Okay, they have the repair system exist. What is that repair system which recognizes and removes the mutations? Which recognizes and removes the mutations. That is the repair system. Is there any improper base pairing that is being removed? Then, you know, the DNA is subjected to various damaging reactions. The damaging reactions. The damaging reactions may be a natural one, what is called spontaneous, caused by spontaneous agents or caused by environmental agents, different agents, for example, temperature. It is one of the environmental agents. Spontaneous, the natural one. Or we have natural endogenous threat, threatening. That is because of the factors present within the body. For example, sometimes any that is what we have adulterated food may cause. So we have endogenous threats or because of environmental agents or spontaneous agents, we have a repair in the DNA molecule. So the DNA is subjected to various types of damaging reactions such as spontaneous or environmental agents or natural endogenous threats which are found within the body. Now the DNA repair system, what is its importance? It plays an important role in the integrity of what we call the genomic or genetic. So it plays a major role in maintaining the genetic or genomic integrity of living organisms, the stability. So normally this DNA repair system protects the integrity of genomes from genotoxic from genotoxic stress. So the main process, the DNA repair system 
protects the genome or integrity of the genome not being actually scattered from genotoxic stress. Genotoxic means you see that one any toxic effect on the genome because of the stress. So that's about the DNA repair system. I will continue the statement further. In a DNA repair system, the various damages caused are corrected by repair enzymes and protein immediately after the damage has taken place. This is because of the repair enzymes and protein. They immediately just release. They just correct what we call the damages. What is the importance or significance of DNA repair system? It helps in maintaining what we have, the genomic or genetic integrity of what we have, the organisms. Maintaining the integrity. What integrity? The genomic or genetic integrity. And also, it protects the integrity of genomes from genotoxic stresses. Genotoxic stresses mean the toxic effect occurred on genomes because of various factors. So, these are the two importance or significance of what we have, the DNA repair system. Now, the third one under the DNA metabolism, recombination process. In a cell, you know that one, the genetic information within or just among the DNA molecules are rearranged by a process called a recombination process. So this is a regular even you know it is taking place during meiosis. So what is actually recombination normally occurring? See the recombination is brought about by a process by name crossing over between the two homologous pair of chromosomes. When during meiosis. So recombination is the result of crossing over which occurs normally between the two homologous chromosomes during what we call just actually the process of meiosis. So what do you mean by recombination at a molecular level? In a molecular level it involves the breakage and reunion of polynucleotides. Breakage and reunion of polynucleotides. That is in a molecular level. That's about the three events which are included and in what we call the DNA metabolism. We have to go in brief about the DNA replication process in eukaryotic cells. Now let us discuss the mechanism of eukaryotic DNA replication. And under this one we have to know some of what we have definitions. The first one, origin of replication. Without origin of replication, there is no replication process. What is origin of replication? So replication normally starts at a specific site on a DNA sequence. A specific site on a DNA sequence called origin of replication. So we need origin of replication. Just in the case of prokaryotes only one origin of replication. But in the case of eukaryotes we have there is more than one origin of what we have replication. That's a difference. There is only one origin of replication in prokaryotes. We have more than one origin of replications in eukaryotes. So replication starts at a specific site on a DNA molecule and that is called what is known as origin of replication. Now I mentioned already more than one origin of replication. If you are taking Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the yeast, we have more than 400 origins of replication. In yeast we have more than for origins of replication. The next one, what is pre-replication complex? Simply called as PRE, capital C. In eukaryotes normally, DNA replication starts with an, an assembly of, just we have pre, just what we have with an assembly of a pre-replication complex. The pre-replication complex is nothing but actually a group of proteins. So this pre replication complex consists of 14 different proteins. So an assembly of these 14 different proteins to start with the DNA replication is called actually pre-replication complex. Uh, 14 proteins forming the pre-replication complex and that only actually starting the process of what we have replication. So only when the assembly of these proteins occur we have the DNA replication starts. Then origin recognition complex. So out of these 14 proteins, we have a part of pre, just what is called replication complex, a part of pre or C, 
is a group of six proteins. Out of fourteen proteins, we have a group of six proteins called ORC, origin of replication complex. Sorry, I made a mistake. Origin of recognition complex, recognizing the sequence. Origin recognition complex. So, out of the fourteen proteins formed in the case of pre-replication complex. A group of six proteins together call what is known as origin recognition complex, and that is the one which acts as an initiator in eukaryotic replication. It is acting as the initiator in eukaryotic replication. So without this one, there is no what is called initiation of what is called the activation of DNA replication. Now next we have to go for ARS. What is ARS? And then what is the nature of just actually replication during? That is, or we can say nature of replication because of yeast. I'll explain. Some more definitions related to eukaryotic DNA replication. That is number one, ARS, autonomously replicating sequence site. ARS, autonomously replicating sequence site. Observe in the case of yeast. Now, when yeast, the origin of replication site is called what is known as ARS. Autonomously replicating sequence site, independently replicating site. That's why it's called autonomously replicating sequence site. Okay. Normally in yeast, the origin what we have recognition complex was identified as a protein complex. The ORC was identified as a protein complex. That is nothing but origin recognition complex, which directly binds with this ARS. That is what is called autonomously replicating sequence site, initiating the process of replication. That's about what we have actually ARS. Now replication fork. Now we already studied what is replication fork. The two strands get separated to form what is called a fork-like structure. That is called replication fork. Now it is now to the site. What site? Unwinding site of the two strands of DNA. It is a site. Of separation of the DNA parallel strands, site of separation of what is called the parallel DNA strands, where new daughter strands are formed. Addition of just actually replication process. So it is a site of what is called separation of the DNA parallel strands. There is unwinding of the two strands of DNA, where you have the formation of new daughter strands. Then what is the role of Elkis enzyme? So it is involved in unwinding. The two strands of DNA. How? By breaking the hydrogen bonds between the two DNA strands. Because the two DNA strands, the base pair is normally binds with what we have hydrogen bonds. But when E and T we have two bonds and G and C three bonds. So the hydrogen bonds are being broken just normally by the enzyme helicase because the hydrogen bonds are holding the two strands of DNA. Then what is replication protein E or T? Once the two strands get detached or separated, they are being prevented to get reattached. Once they are being separated, the polynuclear strands, they are being prevented to get reattached. That is being done what is called by means of replication protein A. So the replication protein A is responsible for preventing the reattachment of the separated DNA strands. Okay, that's about what we have replication protein A, or simply called as RPA. Now we have to go for what is telomerase enzyme and the actual process what is happening. A few words only because we already studied it so in detail. I want I do not go further in detail. Okay. Now what is the role of topoisomerase another enzyme? Now normally this enzyme breaks the DNA's covalent bonds that is between the hydrogens and removes positive supercoiling the one which is present ahead of the replication fork. I mentioned already positive supercoiling. Now this part above the replication fork is not yet unwound. Not yet actually unwound. Not yet unwound. The one which is not actually just actually separated. That is called supercoiling. That is present above the replication fork. Here is called ahead of replication fork. So it breaks the DNA's covalent bonds because tight. Helicase is responsible for breaking the hydrogen bonds. In some places, we have supercoil above the replication fork, which cannot be broken by what we have helicase enzyme. That supercoil can be just separated by means of what's called topoisomerase enzyme. Now, this eliminates the torsional stresses. Torsional means the force because of the twisting. So, it eliminates the torsional stresses caused by what we have unwinding of DNA molecules. 
So anyway, it is responsible for the separation of super coin, the one which is present above the replication form. Now we have to go for the mechanism of replication. The DNA replication, you know that one is initiated when DNA polymerase or another name, the primase. Synthesizes a short stretch of what we have, RNA polymer, RNA primers. Primer is nothing but a segment of RNA which is being laid at the beginning of the replication process. And the bases in the case of primer are complementary to the bases of DNA. The reason for that one, the DNA polymerase cannot initiate the replication process. It needs a free hydroxyl group at the third position. Because during the elongation of the DNA molecule, now the new nucleotides are added only to the third free hydroxyl group. That's why the RNA primers normally add a stretch of RNA having free 3 dash hydroxyl group. Now, RNA primers on both the strands, you know there are two types of strand. One strand is synthesized continuously, what is called the leading strand. Another strand is synthesized discontinuously, that is called the lagging strand. So a stretch of what is called small segment of RNA is being laid down by alpha, what is called DNA polymerase, also called by name primase because it synthesizes a primer, the initiator. I mentioned already primer is needed because DNA polymerase requires free 3 dash hydroxyl group, to which only the elongation process occurs because of the addition of nucleotides. I will continue further. What are the other events happening? What are the types of DNA polymerase enzymes involved in eukaryotic replication. Altogether, there are three DNA polymerase enzymes that are involved in eukaryotic replication of DNA. Eukaryotic DNA replication or eukaryotic replication DNA. Now, number one DNA polymerase, otherwise called what is called alpha. This is the first one. It synthesizes short primer of RNA to initiate the replication process. Number two, DNA polymerase, what we have delta. This is the main replicating enzyme responsible for the elongation of the polynucleotide during the replication process. The third one, DNA polymerase, epsilon. It extends the DNA strand at the replication form, gradually extending the length of the DNA at the replication form. There is also another, what we have DNA polymerase, what is called the beta. It does not play any role in the replication of normal DNA. But what is its function? So it is responsible for removing incorrect bases in damaged DNA. That is what is called the mutated or damaged DNA responsible for the removal of incorrect what is called the bases. That means DNA repair. So anyway it is involved in base excision repair. Base excision means removal. Excision means removal. So in base excision removal that is actually it is involved. That is about the DNA polymerase beta doesn't play any role in normal DNA replication but involved in what is called excision repair. What's the meaning for that one? Removal of incorrect base pairs. Then we have to go for the two types of strands that are formed during DNA replication. DNA replication always occurs in 5 dash, 3 dash direction as in the case of transcription. It never occurs 3 dash and 5 dash. Always in 5 dash, 3 dash direction. And it is semi-discontinuous because one strand is continuous, another strand is discontinuous. Or we can say semi-continuous. That means one strand is continuous, another strand is discontinuous. So we can say either way, semi-discontinuous or semi-continuous. When DNA is synthesized in 5 dash, 3 dash direction, the new nucleotides are added to the growing DNA only in the free 3 dash end where only we have the hydroxyl group is present. We need free hydroxyl group for the attachment of new nucleotide. So DNA is elongated only in the free 3 dash M where you have the hydroxyl group is present. Now what do we work with circuit fragments? So in 1960s, there is what's called the Japanese, Reiji Okasaki and his colleagues found out that one of the new strand is in the size discontinuously in the form of short pieces of DNA. Such as short pieces of DNA formed just during DNA synthesis in one of the strands, particularly the lagging strand. They are called just focus socket fragments after the name of the person. We see that one, this is a discontinuous strand where we have the broken fragments. I will explain in a large diagram. 
The broken fragments are called opposite fragments. Now what is happening? So these broken fragments are joined together by an enzyme DNA ligase to form a continuous strand. Now, there are two types of strand form already we have seen. One is continuous, another one discontinuous. I'll take the first one, discontinuous strand, otherwise called the lagging strand. So in discontinuous strand, where you have actually the oxide fragments are united by DNA ligase enzyme, that is called the lagging strand. That means discontinuous strand with what we have oxide fragments. These fragments are later united or joined by means of DNA ligase enzyme to form a continuous strand. Now what is the direction of what is called synthesis? Here the replication direction in both leading and lagging strand we have only 5 dash 3 dash direction. Here also we have the replication direction is 5 dash 3 dash which is opposite to the direction of the fourth movement. This is the direction of the fourth movement. Now this is the direction of the fourth movement. Here you see that when synthesis occurs in the opposite direction, that's why I mentioned here, opposite to the direction of fourth movement. Whereas we have the continuous strand. The continuous strand is also synthesized in 5 dash 3 dash direction, where the direction of synthesis is towards the fork, the replication fork movement. So it is towards the replication fork movement. We have different enzymes, I'll explain in that one. So, the strand where we have the synthesis occurs continuously is called the leading strand. I'm going to write. And where you have what is called the direction is towards the replication fork movement. So the direction towards to that of what is called replication fork movement. That's about the leading strand or continuous strand. And that is the last part. I draw the diagram. Okay. And then tell you. Now the strand which is synthesized continuously is called as a leading strand. Now here also the replication is in 5 dash, 3 dash direction which is same to the direction to that of what is called the fork movement. It is towards the fork, the replication fork. The lagging strand is away from the replication fork. It is towards the replication fork. Okay. Now the DNA ligase, the enzyme is responsible for joining the fragments of what is called Okasaki fragments. Okay. And how a bond is formed? So, any nick, nick means actually break. So, DNA ligase joins any nick in DNA by forming what's called passport diester bond. The phosphate, you know that one, forming an ester bond with the hydroxyl group of the previous, the preceding what is called the sugar and the phytase of the succeeding sugar. So, a passport diester bond is formed between the 3 dash hydroxyl and 5 dash phosphate group. This is what is happening. Now here is a diagram showing you what is called the replication you already studied in a I want to tell you. Now this is the original strand. Now it is being bifurcated by forming a replication fork with the help of helicase enzyme. The super coil is being removed by means of topoisomerase. Now we have a leading strand template for the synthesis of what is called actually the template strand, sorry, the leading strand, the one which is formed continuously. The leading strand template is in the direction of 3 dash, 5 dash. This is what is called leading strand template. And this one is what is called the leading strand which is growing towards, which is being elongated towards what we call the replication 4. Now we have RPA, replication protein A, which prevents the two strands actually from just being reattached and there is RPA on both the sides we have RPA this is also RPA this is also RPA so helicase topoisomerase this is the replication for we have three DNA polymerase enzymes one this is DNA polymerase epsilon this one okay extending the DNA towards what we have the replication fork then we have a primer which initiates a replication process a stretch of RNA that is primer and the enzyme which is involved in the synthesis of primase is called, sorry, primer is called DNA polymerase alpha. And now this is the DNA polymerase actually delta responsible for the synthesis of DNA, the main enzyme. Now here we have just actually the lagging strand template which is running in 5 dash, 3 dash direction. 5 dash, 2, 3 dash direction. That is a template. And we have the lagging strand which is being synthesized away from the replication form. That is away from the movement of replication form that is away from it. And this is towards and this is away. So it is being formed discontinuously in the form of short pieces of DNA fragments called Okasaki fragments. Later the Okasaki fragments are joined by means of the enzyme represented here, the DNA ligase. 
So this is about the replication process. It is a zipper like fashion just moving towards. So we have just in places we have the what is called the replication takes place either in one one place or more than one place to complete the process. Okay, that's about the diagram. Already just to describe it in molecular actual basis of inheritance and so on. In the same one I repeated. Extra one that's RPA, replication protein A. What is its function? Okay, it prevents the separated what is called the strands from being reattached. The reattachment of the two strands being prevented by means of what is called replication protein A. Okay, that's all about what we have the DNA metabolism in plants. I concluded. We have to proceed other lessons in the next class. Thank you.